Hello, welcome to this DCS F16 tutorial. In this video, I will cover a few extra tools available to you for navigation, in addition to ILS landings. The first thing you need to be aware of for an additional navigation step is your autopilots. On the left here, we have two autopilot switches, pitch, altitude hold, or attitude hold. On the left, we have a heading select or a stored select. To demonstrate the right switch, altitude hold is just flip it up and your plane will maintain your current altitude. You can pitch your aircraft, it doesn't care, it's just concerned about your altitude. To demonstrate the attitude hold, I'll move my velocity vector in whatever orientation I like it, and then push the switch down. Now the plane has locked my velocity vector in its current orientation. I can adjust it, but if I do violent movements, the switch should end up turning off. There we go. Because it thinks you're in danger, so it disabled its autopilots, but you have a decent amount of leeway. Next up is the heading select. This corresponds to the heading select on our HSI. Let me go ahead and throw on altitude hold. And let's figure out a direction we want to go. Let's say we want to go to Kobaletti. Figure out a direction I want to fly, in this case 334. And I'm going to use the heading knob by putting my mouse over it and my scroll wheel to move these two ticks to about 334. Now if I turn on the heading select, the plane will keep me at my altitude because I have altitude on and it will roll me towards the heading select that I have set down here. If I rotate the heading knob, the aircraft is going to pitch itself to try and maintain this new heading. Let's put this back. And that'll take me completely hands off to where I want to go. Just mind your throttle. Alrighty, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk some more about our TAC and an ILS. So say I want to come in for Kobaletti. I can click Kobaletti find its TACAN and ILS info, as in the TACAN video. So I'll make sure I'm all the way at the main DED screen. TACAN ILS button. I will type in the TACAN 67 X-ray. 67, enter. It is now 67. It shows KBL for Kobaletti. If this was on uh, y instead of an X band. All I need to do is press 0, enter, and it changes to Y. That's why it has the 0 in parentheses. It's telling you just input 0, and it will change it. All right. Now I will put in the ILS frequency 11150, 11150, enter. And the course for the runway. Well, we're going this way, so 0, 7, 0. Remember, you can't put a 0 in the front, so 7, 0, enter. Now that's all set up. I also need to remember to change this to T slash R. So I'm going to dauber back up and sequence T slash R. Now that's all set up. In order to utilize our tack in to fly in, I can set the course line. I'll oh, remember to turn off the autopilots. I'll set the course line to 070. Change to tack in mode. And just like before, this is telling me the airfield is actually behind me. And I'm going to need to approach it on this angle. So I'll turn into that. And 
And just for courtesy's sake, I'll radio the ATC. I'm coming in. Alright, so this arrow on the outside is moving to our 9 o'clock position, showing it's off to the left. I'm really close, so you can see how that changed drastically and very quickly. And it's essentially right below me. Yep, there it is. To utilize the ILS system, you will want to press the mode button. So it says, I'll do that one more time, PLS nav, and that means you're utilizing the ILS crosses. On our HUD and on our analog, we have two lines. In order to utilize the ILS for a landing, we will need to make the center of this cross lined up in the center of our velocity vector. To put it simply, put the thing on the thing. You can see it's telling me I need to move over to the left. We're going to want to line up this horizontal cross with the horizontal of our velocity vector, and this vertical line with the vertical of our velocity vector, so that where they intersect is directly in the center. We'll come out a little bit and see if we can't get this to work for us. The beeping you hear in the background is the Morse code associated with the TACAN and the ILS. If it bothers you, you can come down to these volume knobs and lower them. But don't turn them all the way to the off position because that will actually turn off your tech in and ILS. Alrighty, let's see if it's going to work out. Remember, we're no longer in tech in mode, so it's not giving us an accurate tech in reading. If I wanted that, I'll utilize the tack in to get close and then switch it to ILS mode. So I'll do that here. Remember, I want to fly until this line matches that. It's coming up. When they are in line, I'm going to line up the center arrow with the outside arrow. It's on my right, so it's telling me I need to come right. Right, about lined up, and then I just make them both point to the 12 o'clock, and I know I'm flying towards the runway. You should see it, yep, right out there. So I'm going to get into ILS mode. Let's see if it wants to be cooperative. All right, it's not being cooperative. We'll try and come in from the opposite way. It's entirely possible that the airfield has the ILS turned off because of the weather conditions. This is only meant for bad weather landings or nighttime. So I'll come around and if it doesn't populate, just know that when you're flying, you're going to see a cross and you're going to line up the center of the cross with the center of your velocity vector. And you'll utilize that for a landing. In the next video, I will go ahead and do a nighttime landing to hopefully demonstrate this for you.
Yep, the ILS system is not turned on at the airfield because it has good visibility conditions. So in the next video, I'll demonstrate what this looks like uh, briefly at night and in bad weather. Thanks for watching.